Got another question on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this one focuses on entropy. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. First question, we've just got to put a tick in the right column, whether there's an increase or a decrease in entropy. So process A, we're going from liquid ethanol to gaseous ethanol. Well, obviously, it's getting more disordered um, when it becomes a gas, so that's an increase in entropy. Next one, it's all down to the moles of gas, left and right. So we're going from three moles of gas on the left down to just the one, so that's a decrease in entropy. Next one, we're dissolving solid ammonium chloride to create aqueous ammonium chloride. So obviously there's more disorder in the aqueous ammonium chloride, so that's an increase in entropy. Moving on to D, so effectively we've gone from having a gas on the left to no gas at all on the right, so that's a decrease in entropy. And again in E, it's all down to the relative amount of gas left and right. So you've got three moles of gas on the left going to two moles of gas on the right. So that's another decrease in entropy. Part B, so we've got to give a sign and a reason for the um, delta H and delta S for this process here, the melting of ice into water. So in terms of delta H, we're going to have to break some hydrogen bonds to go from the lattice, the solid H2O, into the liquid H2O. So that's going to require energy, positive delta H. Moving on to delta S now. So obviously it's getting more disordered. Liquids have more disorder than solids. And so the entropy change is positive as well. Part two, you've got to calculate delta S. So delta S for a reaction is the sum of the entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropies of the reactants. So that gives a delta S of 216 joules per Kelvin per mole. Two large scale uses of hydrogen. So I've gone for fuel for obviously hydrogen fuel cells and the manufacture of margarine or you could say the manufacture of ammonia, the harbour process in other words. I'm sure there are other answers you could give, so if you, if you haven't gone for those and you want to check, just drop me a line. And finally, part D, you can see I've broken down what we're going to need to do here. So we're going to use the Gibbs equation to calculate delta S at 298 Kelvin. We're going to use the supplied delta H and the delta S we've just calculated to calculate delta G at 1000 Kelvin. And then obviously from that value, we can say whether or not it's going to be spontaneous at that temperature. So that's given me a delta S value of that. Units wise, I'm in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole because I've used kilojoules for delta G and delta H. Feeding the numbers into the Gibbs equation now at 1000 Kelvin, I'm getting delta G coming out at minus 109 kilojoules per mole. So that means the reaction is feasible or spontaneous since delta G is negative or you could say less than zero.